The Opie and Anthony show exploded in Boston. The company, WNEW, they put a new rug in the studio. And Barry Williams was coming in that day, right? So a couple uh, agreed to christen the rug. We're conducting a semi real interview with Barry Williams and uh, we're asking him questions and his eyes just kept going. And he was confused and he goes, uh, do you guys realize that that couple is christening the rug? Oh yeah, we know Barry, we'll get to that later. <laughs> That's my favorite Barry Williams uh, memory. We were massive, massive radio stars, massive, could barely walk around New York and we just destroyed. We were like radio gods. Ah, oh, Christ. The fact is I stuck up for Anthony all the time. Jimmy uh, works out at the gym I work out at. He was coming into the locker room and I was leaving. And I just went, ugh. Anthony blew himself up and then decided to try to spin it and make it like I'm the reason why Opie and Anthony is done, which is insanity. There is not enough money in this world to do another radio show with Mr. Anthony Cumia. Hell no. I wish I had moved on from the Opie and Anthony show uh, years before the whole thing imploded. We're invited to Anthony's house because he's dating Jill Nicolini. This is when I realized Anthony's a fucking twisted individual. That was the day he also invited his side piece to the house. That's when I was like, you know what? I've tried. That is the last time I was um, I was at Anthony's house. I'd rather be poor. <laughs> That's, that is the God's honest truth. I am so glad I'm out of that world. Even though I'm talking to very few people, I am so glad I'm out of that world. There were bits that were happening in front of my eyes that I absolutely were completely against. So yeah, but it was my show, so sure, I take responsibility, yes. I'll be the first one to tell you I'm not fucking perfect. But because of the type of show I did, I kind of understand this world a little bit more. If you want to know the truth, I hated the pedo humor garbage that the Opie and Anthony show did. And I should have spoke up more. There were a lot of things on the Opie and Anthony show that I, were, I was against. And it's on me that I didn't speak up or speak up more. That's on me. 100 fucking percent. And I'll also say that I wasn't, I wasn't perfect. I did horrific things as part of the Opie and Anthony show. Absolutely. But a person could evolve and grow and have different uh, ways of looking at things as they get older. You're friends with Jim, right? I, I am. Well, there's a lot of stuff with Brewer. I'm trying to like focus on some of the better stuff. But um, he was a, a dear friend. We were, really, we were really close. We're still close. He'll call me from time to time and... And we'll laugh our asses off for like two hours while I'm driving out here or something. But uh, I confided in him because me and Anthony simply didn't get along for most of our run. And I'm like, Jim, I'm miserable. I don't I, I, I hate this. I don't even talk to the guy. And we're so famous and we're making so much money, but it's not fun. And he looked at me and said the exact same thing. He's like, just quit. Just quit. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the sad part about that story was I didn't have the balls to just quit like he did. Like he walked away from SNL. And I continued uh, with Opie and Anthony until Anthony blew himself up and then decided to try to spin it and make it like I'm the reason why Opie and Anthony is done, which is insanity. I yeah. have to say it. That's insanity. This goes all the way back to the Boston days, and I'm not going to mention the guy's name anymore. He, he he took a beating from us for decades, but this guy, like, he never got it. He had Opie and Anthony in the palm of his hands. And thank God, mostly me, but Anthony went along for the ride. And what I mean by that, like, I just acted up all the time. I was like, no, this is what we're going to do. And we would have to sit with this guy, and he would yell and scream at us because he was really trying to, like – tame us just imagine like uh wild horses on the plains and you grab one of those beasts and then you beat the crap out of it and try to tame them to follow into the cookie cutter world of radio shows i was like this, this ain't happening i i saw the vision i'm like no we're on to something but this guy like 
no joke, once a week, because then we had to sit with him once a week, and he was trying to control us, and he's yelling and screaming. He's like, you can't do whip him out Wednesday. You can't do this. You can't do that, 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 that. You're talking too much. All this crap. And everything he said, you know, me and Anthony walk out of there a little bummed out. I look at Anthony like, ignore all that. Let's just continue doing us. Um, and, and that's what we did. And then some days, like, some days... The the WAF studio, you got to understand, it was like kind of not down a dark hallway. All of a sudden, like there was a hallway with like uh, the production rooms and a couple studios, and it was kind of dark. And then you opened up our door, and the studio was cool and nice and big. He would yell and scream at us about this and that, and then I I would look at Anthony like, no, we're going to continue the bid, and we're going to continue being us. Anthony knows all this to be true. Maybe he can lighten up and talk about some of the cool stuff we did, and. Uh, and so we'd go on the air and continue because I knew it was working, right? And then uh, we'd go to a commercial break. And I, I traditionally, I always left the uh, studio every commercial break just to get some air, walk around a little bit, maybe go to the bathroom, maybe get coffee, whatever. I'd open the door. He's just standing there with his arms folded. I thought I told you. And I go, <laughs> this drove him nuts. Because now you can't say that you were defiant, right? Which I was. In my head, I'm just being defiant. I'm like, I ain't listening to you. I, I got dreams and aspirations, and you're in my way. That's what I thought the whole time. So I'd walk out of the studio. He'd be sitting there with his arms folded and just beat red. I thought I told you guys. And I would go, oh, I thought. And I would just play this game like, oh, I thought you meant and I would work around it. Oh, I'm so okay. You know what? We won't do that anymore. But in my head, I'm like, we already did it, so it doesn't matter. We don't need to do it anymore. So now I'll sort of play K Tam. But it was always like, oh, I'm oh, you, oh, I misunderstood when you. I thought you meant starting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's what I mean by, like, in my career, there was only a few people that, that just got it and was like, yeah, just to, you, do you understand the rules of radio? Yeah, of course I do. Okay. Just make sure you don't do anything uh, so stupid that the government comes after us. And even that, we failed a little bit here and there. But considering the stuff we were doing on a regular basis, my God, I think I, I played it right. So I thank you, Eric Logan. I know you check these out every once in a while. I thank you, Tim Sabian. I know you check these out every once in a while. Lee Abrams, I lost touch with you a long time ago uh, with you and your airplane with the stupid parachute. But I thank you, too, if this gets back to you. And to the guy that was having an affair all those years ago in Boston, I thank you as well, sir. That guy especially. Because I had a PD in Rochester at WCMF, the, uh, the home of rock and roll. And they were doing a convention. And at this point, I moved from Rochester to Buffalo. And this guy, this PD, he really was like, God damn, dude. Yeah, just do you. This is, this is very uh, uh, non-traditional, but it's kind of working, even though I was doing overnights, whatever. But he's like, yeah, keep doing this. And then my, my PD from Rochester ran into my PD, my new PD in Buffalo. And, uh, and he's like, what? what? What did you do? He is so different. In a good way. And this guy, he said, I'm just letting him be him. And, I mean, you know, I learned a lot from the PD in Rochester. I don't want to trash him either. But I was like, I, I had strict parameters back then. I wasn't able to try to just th throw my insane personality at anybody, at anyone. I, I had a... And, and because I was more like a uh, low man on the totem pole, like I had to listen to that guy or, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had a job. That's the other thing. When you get some, some cred, then you don't have to listen to these guys. Cause, cause then you got the big bosses like, Holy crap. You see their numbers. You see the revenue that's coming in. <laughs> and you know that. And, and that's another reason why you quote, take your chances. I, 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 I didn't even really take chances in my career. If you want to know the truth, I, I knew exactly what I was able to accomplish. Ah, oh, Christ. Jose, you're in timeout and possibly blocked. You know, the fact is I stuck up for Anthony all the time. And he knows that. I'll, I'll go back to Boston. I'll give you a little, a little something. The same guy 
that I don't mention his name anymore because he's been through a lot with us with his folded arms. And, and I would go, oh, I thought I'll give you a little something. So this guy, because he, he came from traditional radio, meaning boring radio. And then he had me. He knew that I, at that point, did a lot of years of uh, radio. One day, in the middle of the show, I went to get coffee. This is, uh, he was uh, relatively new at the time. We only took the job at WAAF because of a guy named Ron Valeri. And then that guy left for a bigger gig in New York City. So now we're stuck with this guy who came from Nebraska, didn't really get what me and Anthony were about to do. And one of the things he said to me during the show, I'm getting coffee. He goes, why Anthony? Because, you know, Anthony came from uh, installing air conditioners. He goes, why, Anthony? He wanted me to do a traditional radio show with another guy that put in the years on the radio. I looked at him like, oh, no, we're never going to get along. We're never going to get along. And what I said to him uh, was very, very obvious. I said, uh, what do you mean, why, Anthony? Are you listening to the show? Everything you need to know, just listen to the show, and then you can answer your own questions. I said this to the guy. And then he went to uh, my big boss, Bruce Mittman. He was the very, very short guy that uh, drove an escalator. We used to joke that he uh, needed a rope ladder to get in and out of his car. Um, he, was trying, he was trying to move on from Anthony by talking to Bruce. And Bruce is, to Bruce's credit, he's like, no, these guys got something. It's obvious. That dope could have came along for the ride, but instead he just couldn't get it out of his head that, no, this is not how radio works. Why, Anthony? Could you imagine? Look, I don't like the guy or anything like that, and times have certainly changed, but to, to go, why, Anthony? <laughs> Jesus. And guess who was right and guess who was wrong? Guess who was stuck in... In Worcester, Massachusetts, or wherever the hell that radio station was. And guess who who went to the promised land? Why, Anthony? Dope. In retrospect, maybe he was right. Oh, who was, Aldo? Who? 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 Oh, with the ant thing? No. As much as I don't get along with ant, no. In retrospect, he was not right about ant. You know, ant decided to change. I strongly... Uh, disagree with the direction he decided to go in with his career um we're not talking about my career right now we're talking about his the guy was uh incredibly talented incredibly funny uh quick as all hell the voices were good i'm not even sure if his voices were good i think i think how he used all the voices he did made him so damn good and so funny because the material was right on you know, Frank Caliendo did great voices, but his material sucked. Anthony's voices were good, but the material was outstanding. And, uh, you know, I disagree with the, uh, the direction he's decided to go. And if it works for him, though, whatever. Whatever. But it's, it's not anything I want to be part of anymore. Uh, and there you go. So, no, I would stick up for Anthony on that comment, Aldo. No, that guy in Boston was not right when he said, why Anthony? No, no. For years and years and years, it worked. And then the change slowly started to happen. Ah, nah, I still disagree, Aldo. You know, I wish I... I think I wish... I try not to go through life with regrets, but I wish I had moved on from the Opie and Anthony show uh, years before the whole thing imploded. I, I wish I did that, and I certainly walked off the show and had no intention of coming back a couple times, but I was pulled back by the, probably the money and the fame. Um, but besides that, what are you going to do? Because I think the last few years of me on my own show hurt me because I, I was, I was a shell of my former self. I wasn't really a huge contributor by the end, but there, there was so much crap that happened. I, I could kind of justify that to a point. But if I have any regret, I wish I wish I I would have left the show years before the whole thing imploded. Didn't you work for WBCM Boston? Yeah, we did. We sure did. Uh, 
when we went to New York, we got syndicated back to Boston, excuse me, Boston, and they put us on uh, WBCM. We did all right. We did all right up there on our second run. Our first run in Boston was uh, one for the ages. And then, you know, our first run was like Caddyshack when we were at WAF, the only station that really rocks. The Opie and Anthony show exploded in Boston. Boston will always be close to my heart, man. Uh, and we just destroyed. We were like radio gods, I have to say, because no one else is going to say it. But we were radio gods up there in Boston, the first run. It was like Caddyshack. Second run, it was like Caddyshack 2. <laughs> no, not really. It wasn't that bad. But there was definitely a drop-off, and it wasn't as uh, successful as our first run. That's for sure. But then again, we were syndicated, and we had to worry about a ton of markets. So would you do one more year of Opie and Anthony for $10 million? Hell no. Nope. There is not a price. There is not enough money in this world to do another radio show with uh, Mr. Anthony Cumia. Hell no. Someone sent me a clip where he said there was a price. He said it on Bob Kelly's show or something, his dumb shed show. God, no. There's, there's not – there's not – no. No amount of money would get me to do another radio show with Anthony. God, no. Hell, I would rather, and, you know, fast forward another five years, it'll probably come true. I'd rather be poor. <laughs> that is that is the God's honest truth. Uh, Eric, hey, Ope, did you see your boy Barry Williams is going to be on Dancing with the Stars? I think one of the best things you did on ONA is when you cold called Barry at 6 a.m. and scared the life out of him. <laughs> we used to mess with Barry Williams. My greatest Barry Williams moment. Barry Williams is uh, the real Greg Brady, if you need to know TikTok. Uh, so uh, there was a time me and Anthony were very, very jaded. We were massive, massive radio stars, massive, could barely walk around New York. It's very different these days. I, I'll be the one to tell you that. Yes, I know it's very different these days. And, um, and we were a-holes. I was more of an a-hole than Anthony, certainly, but uh, he, he had some a-hole in him as well. And um, and I, I, didn't, I didn't want nice things around me. So uh, the company, WNEW, um, <laughs> they put a new rug in the studio. So most, most people would be like, oh, wow, you really care about us, and you cleaned up the studio, you put a brand new rug in. That's really, really nice. And Barry Williams was coming in that day, right? So me and Anthony decide, you know, we got to christen this rug. We got to christen it. So we we would just throw this stuff out, and and uh, nine out of ten it would stick, and someone would go, yeah, all right, we'll do that. So I'm like, uh, hey man, we got a brand new rug here at NEW, and uh, we need a couple to christen it. So a couple, uh, you know, agreed to christen the. Uh, the rug. So they were in the corner doing their thing, right? To really doing their thing. They were doing a very good job with the christening. Very, very good job. <laughs> and Barry Williams is in. And we're, we're conducting a semi-real interview with Barry Williams, and uh, we're asking him questions, and his eyes just kept going. And he was confused, and he goes, uh, do you guys realize that that couple is christening the rug. Oh, yeah, we know, Barry. We'll get to that later. And the couple's trying to get our attention, and they're really christening the rug. And uh, Barry's like, anyway, yeah. So Alice, Alice was great to hang out with Offset. <laughs> That's my favorite Barry Williams uh, memory. It just showed how jaded we were. Like, oh, yeah, they're doing their thing. Don't worry about them, Barry. We want to talk to you now, and we'll get to them. Jim and Sam is the worst show ever. Jimmy should get out of Sam's way. There are only so many times you can have a kiss show on Ozzy <laughs> or Ozzy's show. <laughs> hey, Jim, get a hobby and get off the show. I'm, I'm so glad. I am so glad I'm out of that world. Even though I'm talking to very few people, I am so glad I'm out of that world. He's still doing the same shit, right? Of course he is. He's doing the same shit because he's... Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll... Cheers. I'll just, I'll, I'll just stop. 
is very distracted by other things. I'll just say that. But thank you for the $10, J, uh, JD Straight Shot. Sam, Jim, did you watch Blank this weekend? Jim, no. Sam then talks to Trav and Troy for two hours. Jimmy farts to fit into the conversation. <laughs> that's why That's why he developed those characters. He didn't really feel like being in on real conversation, so he would ruin everything with his dumb characters. Has Anthony still not been to your house? Oh, God, no. Yeah, he met my, my son just because I, I brought him into uh, Sirius XM. So he met him once. He never had the desire to come over to my uh, my houses. Ooh, ooh, a little humble brag. He never had the, the desire to do any of that stuff. So, no, he's never, he's never seen uh, my house. He never met my daughter. He met my son uh, once. My kids don't know anything about him. Literally, 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 literally nothing. Have I been to Anthony's house? Of course I have. I think the last time I was at Anthony's house, I'll leave you with this. I was, uh, I was invited to a party, me and my now wife. And it was when he was uh, dating Jill Nicolini. And this is when I realized Anthony's a fucking twisted individual. And he would probably take that as a compliment, so don't get fucking mad, all right? Um, so we're invited to Anthony's house because he's dating Jill Nicolini, and the families are so happy that these two are dating uh, that they want to throw a huge pool party, and I was invited. So this goes way, way back, and this was the last time I believe I was there. Well, that was the day that... Uh, the two families got together to celebrate that uh, Anthony and Jill were dating. They were thinking maybe it was going to become very, very serious. Who knows? Maybe lead to marriage. I don't know. But how this party was set up, there was uh, high expectations for this uh, for this coupling. And that was the day he also invited his side piece to the house. And then famously, uh, you know, the side piece was naked in the closet. And Jill discovered the whole thing and then burned her crap in the fire pit at Anthony's house. That's when I was like, you know what? I've tried, but we can't do this anymore. This is this is twisted shit. So that is the last time I was um, I was at Anthony's house. Before that, I probably man, I, I mean I was I was at his house when he had nothing in there. Literally nothing, not even furniture. And then he, uh, he built into a, an impressive uh, abode, very impressive. And I went over there a few times. And, uh, and then after that uh, Jill Nicolini incident, I was, I was done. I was like, I, I can't keep up with this shit. I can't do it. So uh, there you have it. You remember listening uh, to this live crazy show? Yeah, that whole story. Yeah, man, it became it – became, um, Great content for the for the radio show, that's for sure. My goodness. I think it was, Jennifer Ferris, was uh, that the Canadian with the now burned passport? I believe so. Jill got so pissed off, she uh, collected this girl's stuff and uh, and burned it in, in a fire pit. I'm not speaking out of turn. This is all online. And the hardcore fans of the Opie and Anthony show, they know all about it. But it's just weird that that's also the last time I ever went to Anthony's house, I believe. When's the last time you spoke to Anthony and Jimmy? Yeah, well, I started taking phone calls from Anthony when I did the um, the new show with Carl and Vic and Sherrod. Those were going very, very well. We did five or six of those, and I felt like there was a path to keep the ONA brand together. Um, but they were moving very, very quick on their end, and they really wanted us to move over to um, Anthony's joint. And I felt like it wasn't the right place for me, so I, I, I turned it down. And then um, that's my recollection. And then, um, you know... Then the hate got really, really, really bad after that and continues, unfortunately, to this day. So um, as far as Anthony goes, I I talked to him for the last time on the phone four or five years ago. I haven't seen him in person in seven. And Jimmy, I don't know if I ever told this story. So Jimmy uh, works out at the gym I work out at. And uh, I was leaving uh, the locker room and I opened the door and uh, – <laughs> It was Jimmy. <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you guys this. And I, my natural reaction was, so he was coming into the locker room and I was leaving. And this was the first time I saw him in, uh, I don't know, a couple of years. And uh, 
I swear to you, all I could muster up, it was just a natural reaction. I just went, Ugh, really, really loud, and then walked by him and, and uh, left the gym. So I, I guess that was the last time I talked to Jimmy. <laughs> but that was my natural reaction. I always wondered what I would say if I saw him or whatever, and, and what came out was just a, Ugh, you should have – Threw a protein bar at the worm's liver spotted head. Well, damn. Jacob, did he respond? Jimmy? I swear to you, I have no idea. I have no idea what he said to me. I think he was in shock that he was just opening up the door and I was on the other side. And I uh, I blew past him pretty fast with my ick. I'm sure, knowing Jimmy as much as I used to, I should say, I'm sure I'm sure he, uh, he had a retort. That, but I honestly could tell you I did not hear anything. But I'm sure he, I'm sure when he realized what the fuck was going on, he had a quick something, something to say. But I blew by him. So freaking awkward. Yeah. Brian Bernard, it was really awkward, but it's kind of funny. Uh, now that's funny, Andy. Come on now. Uh, he obsessed over that for weeks, guaranteed. Ah, probably. Probably, probably forget about who you dislike, dude. Focus on the future. Make good on the past. I, I've made good on the past. I've taken a lot of responsibility in um, a lot of the things. Um, I really like what I do now. Um, it's hard, though, man. I'll be honest with you. It's really, really hard. People hit me up with this shit um, all day long. If I go on social media, it, it's all day long. So I'm... Uh, Honestly, I'm on the social media less and less, especially Twitter. Twitter's just garbage. It's just an absolute cesspool. How did you not laugh in his face? I, it was just a natural reaction. It was just to be like, ugh, God. Oh, oh, and I said God, too. Ah, oh, God. That's right. I said that, too. Because <laughs> I was so mad. I, I'm like, oh, really?